area is that there is a, a very, it's very spread the lack of rotation of roles. So it's very common that there are roles, but there is only 5% of the cases that has a way of uh, rotating the roles. This is a, well, if, if there are Wikipedians in the, in, in the, here, you will know this problem. It's a very well-known problem in which uh, the administrators start to be administrators in Wikipedia and there is, they, they have been there for the 10 years. So there is very, it's very problematic the element of ro ro rotation of roles in, in, and it's very common in, in the field. In terms of license, only 3% of the cases are based on proprietary license. So actually the, the free, and free license is very common in common based field production. We identify four, 14 different types of, of, of uh, free and open uh, license. The most used license are general public license or creative commons. Um, and almost half of the cases are copyleft, by copyleft referring that they have a clause that uh, promote uh, share alike. In terms of um, uh, type of infrastructure architecture, even if uh, CAPS want to promote decentralized architecture, that's something that is not in the field. Actually, it's a, 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 a real need, and there is a lot of possibility of improvement. Because uh, uh, from 88% to 95% of the cases are based on putting the data into centralized servers. In terms of infrastructure architecture, the two forms of centralized uh, architecture are the most common, which are the ones uh, uh, based on centralized uh, and, and not free software, or centralized and free software, which would be the case of Wikipedia. In contraposition, the federate type of uh, uh, infrastructure architecture, like cases of Enmens, One, Lurea, or Pune, are only 3% of the sample. And only 5% of the sample is based on peer-to-peer -peer architecture. The, uh, the, the platform we are promoting in peer-to-peer -peer value will be actually based on federated infrastructure in order to cover this, this real need. Uh, finally, in terms of conditions of success, we have not identified, like, this is common sense. There are not like a, a formula that characterizes the cases that are being able to generate value in all the dimensions of value that they are able to generate. Big communities, they are able to be reputated, they are able to have big monetary budget. Not, not any of the cases, like, are good in everything. What we identify, there are different uh, models of, uh, actually, there are different models of success. There are some cases that are very successful because generate very big communities, while other cases are very successful because generate a very collaborative and integrated uh, communities. Uh, we also identified that there are uh, some trends, like for example, the cases that are based on self-governance uh, tend to be able to generate more value, uh, but only in specific areas, like areas like uh, in flows or in uh, community networks, in this type of areas, self-governance favor value creation. But in other areas, that's, that is not present. So the condition of subset must be adapted to different, the different areas of production and, um, and again, uh, uh, different like, uh, models of uh, success. Um, thank you very much. Just want to make a, a publicity that we, we a member of our uh, project is Johai Wendler, which is one of the, is the, actually the proponent of the com concept of common basement production, is going to come to Barcelona on the 25th of February, uh, and uh, he will be uh, reflecting on our research and, and presenting his, uh, his uh, book on the Wealth of Network, so you are invited to come. Thank you. If there are not uh, direct questions, we will move to the second presentation. Why is there? Could you present yourself, please? Yes, uh, I'm Roger from the Infinite Foundation. Uh, and my question is about uh, why it's so problematic. You said that it's so problematic, the lack of rotation in the governance. Because getting experience in governance takes a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. If you can elaborate this bit more, please. Okay. Uh, so, the data is that only 5% of the cases has uh, said that they have rotation mechanisms for changing the, the people in the, in the roles. Uh, 
Uh, that's the data. You can interpret it as you like. We consider it as, 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 as problematic and also be reflecting on on uh, on uh, on the conceptions inside of conceptions of democracy inside of the cases. This point as a problem, but that's a judgment that we we are uh, putting into it. It could not be problematic. It could not be considered problematic. That's not. Uh, Sorry about this mic. Uh, which rate do you expect to be acceptable? You said that 5% is too low? I don't have an answer. Uh, I think that at least half of the cases to have rotation uh, would be uh, positive. But uh, again, that's my judgment. I, uh, or, or judgment. It's not. Uh, for example, in the European Union, there is a force to rotate. You have to rotate. Uh, she, she, she's not always working in the same uh, kind of field. And I think that brings positive help. Yes. I don't know. So that's what I was going to say, that uh, we have implemented 100% rotation especially at high levels. Uh, in Italy, the police force, there were cases of abuse of power, and the police had to be rotated. And they went on strike. So that shows you how fierce the culture is to these entrenched, uh, localized power. For policemen to go on strike against rotating of policemen across neighborhoods shows the no, I had, I had a question, so I had a, an interesting slide about the forms of contract and, and that you had it. Uh, and I was thinking that, that in many areas there are, uh, for instance, in web entrepreneurship, there is a manifesto that, that was signed by 6,000 people, which said that what Europe needs is a single digital incorporation license. It's called e, uh, e Corp. Now this is controversial, but it says that if you're incorporated in Barcelona, you can provide online services throughout. This doesn't exist. It's something that is asked for. And based on your slide, a different slide, which has different kinds of contracts and licenses. Now I think it would be interesting to look at that and to actually find out if there's any convergence to one form that is easiest across you know, EU member states. That could be one of the policy aspects that comes out of it. It's very interesting. You, of course, want to simplify the legal and admin basis that comes with it, but also strengthen enforceability of certain rights and, and uh, obligations. So I think that's a very interesting policy slide that you present. Uh, I have a technical question. I have a technical question in regards to this uh, project and the CAPS call of this year because it, I think the structure of the call was different. So this this project would fit under which category in this particular 2015 call? So that, that's a good question. Um, if I were them, because they submitted under internet science, okay, not under the CAPS call. But that group was 100% force rotation, so you know, things change, <laughs> powers change, and it was associated with CAPS, and therefore uh, myself as a PO. So if I were them, I would put it under that 4 million. However, there's, there might be type. You have to guess, because when I told you that the last call had to more than 10 percent, you know, one out of 10 over subscription. Your one out of 10 got funded. You can see that it's highly competitive. So you have to guess which area is going to be least, uh, uh, you know, where the competition is easy. So that's a difficult one. Sometimes, uh, you know, it pays to do what the 5% thinks of instead of the 95%. So if 95% of the people are going, for one goal, then if you're the fish 
If you remember, one of my slides had a lot of fish in it. There was a red one. If all the fish are going that way, you're going the other way, you might not be eaten because everybody's going for that 95%. So it's really a guess, it's a, it's a clever game. Um, for example, there's a one million for coordinating action, and if you wanted to do a licensing or EU license for a common based peer production, you could do that with less than one million, but you'd have to be the only one there, and then you'd have to get the money that the one who wants to organize one conference, three meals, and two meetings. You see what I mean? You have to imagine who else is competing for that budget. Sometimes it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're really good, you don't mind, right, the competition, if you're in the Nobel Prize uh, project. But other times, it's a guess. It's, it's, it's a game, as I said. You have to guess where else. But if I were them, I would put it under the multi... This is very multidisciplinary. It's kind of a, in a kettle of fish on its own now, because it, it's doing some sociological analysis of the, the last 20 years of open source. Communities. I remember, in fact, I was in Future Emerging Technologies, we had a, a case study of the open source community, and it failed. Because they didn't realize, how, now the commission was really upset, they said, gosh, you know, this would have been a great project, it was just the right time to document things that after 10 years, nobody actually knows. So it was the right moment, but people didn't realize it, because it didn't fit in the category that people expected. So, uh, I'm going to speak about uh, Descent, a project that uh, started uh, about one year ago. It means uh, decentralized citizens' engagement technologies for direct democracy and economic empowerment. So, the, um, the core idea is that of um, um, tackling two, two main issues. The one is the, the top, uh, decentralization, decentralized architectures, and uh, the top democratic participation. So um, we all know the importance of um, all the problems and the issues with uh, centralized architecture that are dominating now, um, with uh, with accumulation of data in, in the hands of some private companies, and um, this is maybe not so much an issue, at least it's not so perceived as, as a real issue by individual users because the convenience you have in using this system is, is much bigger than, than the risk you have as an individual. But if you look at this um, as a society, as a collective level, um, this really implies some, some risks for even, I would say, um, for democracy on the long term or for, uh, also for sovereignty and, uh, at the European level. As, these companies are mostly in the US. So this is a, a, a very important issue and it is related to, uh, to democracy. And, and in, in the field of democratic participation, so uh, we expect to have a much higher uh, sensitivity to this topic because here it is particularly uh, relevant. And so we kind of uh, connect together these two issues and um, we know that, uh, that the, um, our, uh, our institutions, the democratic institutions, have not changed much in the last decades, while uh, our, uh, our society has changed a lot, and we are uh, all the day connected with some uh, smart devices that uh, are connected to some data center somewhere, and um, we use it for entertainment for many purposes, and there is still um, a lack of tools, and of course not only of tools, um, of for, um, for democratic participation. So this was also, um, well, I would say, that the main demand of the citizen movement that, that, we, are, uh, that we are assisting in, in, a, in, a, in, in Spain and in, a, in a many other countries of the world, in which citizens are demanding um, a real democracy. And so um, forms of uh, participation and citizen engagement in the, in the political life. Um, so we, um, as Spanish partners, we are two institutions, uh, Barcelona Media and uh, WOC, Universidad Abierta de Catalunya, and um, we came to this project because of our individual participation in the uh, collective data analysis 15M, 
So we started with the idea of studying um, data of the 15M movement and of other uh, similar movements uh, for citizens for an act of the democracy. And, um, and so the, the, the idea was not only to study this data to understand what was going on, but also to give something to the, to the citizens, to the community. So um, we could say uh, big data for the masses. Like big data now is, is um, mainly managed by uh, private actors that, um, you know, this issue of, uh, of the value, no? The value created in social networks. So every individual uh, creates some value, that, no? Contributes, creates some value, but then who is really taking advantage of the aggregation of this value to build knowledge in many cases are private actors. So our vision is that of um, developing a matrix of visualizations that can help um, users to have a higher awareness of the, of the state of the network. And uh, okay, so this is also one of our uh, contributions to the, to the platform, to have this kind of analytics and visualizations to existing tools. Um, <coughs> So, uh, the, so the main idea of, is of uh, uh, developing tools or improving existing tools for, uh, for democratic participation and, uh, and for economic empowerment. Um, and it's not just uh, building one more uh, platform, but uh, rather um, developing standards and uh, an ecosystem of, um, of federated uh, services. So the, the, the main idea are, uh, of having a um, um, unified uh, identification system. So decentralized, but very e easy for the users. So in a way that you have, um, li like a Google login or something like that, you can imagine, with so an ecosystem of, um, of, um, of uh, nodes and of uh, services that share a different policy for, uh, for uh, uh, Respecting privacy and uh, data ownership, we have for this reason we have in uh, in the project the W3C, which is the organization responsible for regulating the standards of the web, and so um, we are working at defining uh, some standards in which um, many of the existing uh, uh, initiatives that go in this direction uh, could, uh, could fit and uh, and integrate with, with one another. And, um, and so with some, uh, uh, also some basic, um, uh, basic uh, uh, facilities like uh, uh, collaboration, secure messaging, and uh, open data integration. Um, so um, we are um, collaborating with uh, existing uh, code bases and communities. And um, for example, we have uh, Democracy OS and your priorities for uh, prioritizing things. For, get, for selecting ideas among uh, many people, and um, an open ministry in Finland for uh, lawmaking, and then um, applications for uh, real time polling and um, yeah, decision making. And, uh, okay. the, the, the last idea is that of um, for economic empowerment. Um, uh, a social currency. Um, I use the word Bitcoin to, to give the idea, but uh, in this case we don't want to scale up like Bitcoin, just uh, a bit less, I would say. And so to make a currency for um, currencies for local communities. Uh, and so we are collaborating uh, here in Catalonia with the Eurocat, um, a project for um, a complementary currency. Um, Mutual credit system without interest. We don't have the time to enter the details. And um, so we have um, three large scale pilots. In, um, in Finland, we have uh, Open Ministry that manage the um, uh, low proposals uh, redacted by uh, and selected by, by citizens that uh, have to be. Um, to be um, uh, analyzed by, by the parliament. And then also some initiatives at, at, the, at the city level in Helsinki and in the neighborhoods in Helsinki. 
And uh, in Iceland also we have uh, uh, better Reykjavik and better Iceland, which are mainly based on uh, your priorities or software that was developed in, in Iceland to allow a large number of people to select priorities and, um, and it is also used for, um, for managing the budget of the neighborhoods of Reykjavik, for example, and there are some pilots also in, in Estonia using this software. And, um, Okay, so these are two, probably Finland and Iceland, we have some of the most advanced uh, experiences of uh, participatory democracy proposed by the institutions. Um, while in Spain we have a different scenario, we have uh, probably uh, the, the, one of the most uh, active and lively movements uh, demanding for uh, more democracy and for participation. So we have very large bases of users that are um, demanding. Uh, more participation. And so we started working with uh, some collectives uh, of the Fistina movement, and then um, we, we, we are now working with Banyan Barcelona, so a, a, a coalition for a, a bottom up democracy uh, in, uh, in Barcelona, and uh, uh, with uh, Labo Demo, which is a collective that makes uh, tools for uh, um, uh, democratic participation in, uh, in Podemos. So uh, this is about the Spanish pilot. Um, we have uh, on the bottom some of the existing software that are already are already been, been used. There is also some somebody from Agora Voting in the public. It is uh, uh, great software for uh, for secure voting. And um, and so on one side we are uh, working to integrate and, and improve uh, some of, of these existing uh, uh, software that are we are very. Uh, we are really following what the communities are using and, um, and then uh, understanding some needs that are not covered by current software and for example we are developing um, a distributed policy making uh, software. Um, so this is an example, uh, probably some people here have participated in this, uh, in this process for the um, amendment uh, of the uh, draft of the ethical code for Urbanyam and then of the final uh, appro approbation. Um, okay, so the, the, the basic principles to wrap up are um, the, so, um, fostering uh, uh, citizen ownership of data and access to knowledge with, um, with infrastructures that are uh, secure and uh, privacy aware by, by design with a decentralized uh, architecture and um, building a kind of federation and an ecosystem for, for uh, different uh, service, services to, uh, to, be, to be integrated. And, um, and very important, the, the idea of uh, taking advantage of the network effect and uh, working with uh, uh, citizen movements that are, that are, uh, are the early adopters, uh, early adopters of, uh, of our platform, let's say, so to, to get large basis of users to, to use our software and um, we are developing in, uh, with a, a lean development process, uh, agile development, so we are in continuous, uh, con receiving continuous feedback from the, um, from the <coughs> users and the communities.